name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nation to the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called out and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing, forever 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow me after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he's a prophet receive, will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we listen to the beginning of the gospel today, it sounds rather harsh, doesn't it? It sounds like Jesus wants us to throw aside all of our other relationships. And that's not what he's saying at all. You need to remember that Jesus is teaching, but he's teaching based on the teachings of the Jewish people. And one of the biggest, one of the greatest 
creeds of the Jewish people. It's called the Shema. It's taken from Deuteronomy. And it basically says, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying you have to put God first. Because if God's not first, then nothing else works. But he's not saying that you have to ignore the people with whom you have a relationship. I mean, they're there for a reason. Either God put them there for you to help or for them to help you. So relationship is important in our lives. But our primary relationship has to be that of our relationship to God. Otherwise, everything else will fail. Now, Jesus goes on in the gospel to begin to talk a little bit more about the second part of what he taught at the greatest commandment. If you remember that story, Jesus is asked by the scholars of the law, what is the greatest of the commandments? Oh, there are 613 Jewish commandments. And Jesus says, here is your Lord your God, the Lord alone shall the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your being. That is the basic Jewish creed. But he doesn't stop there. He says, and the second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so we see in the latter part of the gospel how care for the people around us is, is, is as important as our relationship with God. That kind of brings us to a question. You know, some people will say that we are only justified by faith and that's all that matters. Now don't get me wrong. We believe we are justified by faith. But if it stops there, what does that say about us? St. James tells us that faith without works is dead. And so we need to show our faith in how we live our lives. And that's probably not more evident than in the 25th chapter of Matthew's Gospel at the Last Judgment where Jesus tells the story of the king who comes and gathers the nations and he puts the sheep on his right, the goats on his left, and he begins to tell them, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, in prison and you visited me. What Jesus is saying there is what is important is how you go out and treat the people around you, how you minister to the people around you. you know, notice what Jesus is not saying in that. Jesus doesn't say, how many times did you come to church? Where did you go to church? How many prayers do you say? Those are all important things. But if your piety stops there, it falls short. What we need to be doing is taking our faith and putting it into action for the people out in the world. And that's what makes us Christians. That's what is supposed to set us apart. We are fed here by the word and by the body and blood of Jesus. We take that message out to the people of the world who need to hear it. But if we stop at the doors, What's the sense of being here? We are here to be disciples. We are here to be missionaries. We are here to be ministers to the people around us. And the only way to do that is to be fed and then to take that message out. We need to show people that we are a church of people who care for one another and for the people around us. That is what draws people into Jesus. It's not any great theology or any great discussions. It is action. It is people doing the things that draw people to the love of Jesus. Because in those actions, we are reflecting the love of Jesus to the people around us. Kind of a dumb little story here, but there's a youth minister who happens to be stopping at a bar one night, and there's this bum sitting there. And somebody said, it's his birthday. Well, there's nobody there to take care of this guy. So youth minister goes, gets a cake, comes back, and they all sing happy birthday to this bum 
at the bar at 1 o'clock in the morning. And the bartender says, well, what church are you from? And the guy says, well, I'm from a church that sings, that, that sings happy birthday to a bum at 1 o'clock in the morning. He said, if I could find that church, I'd go there. We need to be recognized in the community for our Christian values, for our love, for our compassion. That is what draws people into the message of Jesus Christ. But you might ask, okay, well, who is my neighbor? And in loose telling of the great, the great commandment, that question exactly comes up on the, word, the lips of the scholar of the law who just told Jesus what the two commandments are. And Jesus breaks into the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, we all know that parable, and it doesn't really strike us as not any more than kind acts. Guess what? For a Jew, there is no such thing as a Good Samaritan. They're the bad people. They're the other people. They're those people. And Jesus shows that all people are equal. We, as people of God, cannot see those people. Because when we see those people, we segregate ourselves. We need to see the people of God, the children of God, all people. We need to be embracing everyone, regardless of what we think about them. Because we're called to love them anyway. We may not agree with things they do or choices they make but we can't judge them. We cannot separate them from the love of God. God loves them anyway, and we need to love them as well. We need to set up no barriers to the love of God. We need to set up no barriers to the people to approach the love of God. We need to do everything we can to make people feel welcome, to make people feel cherished, to make people feel that their dignity is honored when we interface with people, because we interface with people as the face of Jesus Christ. And if we are doing other than that, and believe me, I'm preaching to myself too, if we are doing other than that, then we need to step back and think about what Jesus would really want us to do in that situation. We need to put our faith into action in the world so that we draw people to Jesus rather than push them away. America is a great nation. We should let freedom ring, but the only way we can let freedom ring is if we love everybody and we treat everybody equally. When doing that, we put into words, put into, put into action the message of the gospel the message of today's gospel, the message of the gospel in general, that God loves each and every one of us and that we need to live that, our lives in that love so that we reflect that love to other people. Just remember what St. James tells us. Faith without works is dead. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy 
Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. With trust and confidence in our Heavenly Father, let us place our petitions before him. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may God strengthen our holy mission to bear abundant fruit in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations, may God call forth priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers in service to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, may the saving grace of Jesus Christ permeate every heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all who struggle in carrying their crosses, may the spirit of consolation give them strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here and our call to be hospitable to those around us. May the Lord help us to be better stewards of our blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of faith, especially William Gross, may our merciful Father welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the well-being of Stephen Deal, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear and answer these prayers we make in faith, if they be in accord with your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collection today is for maintenance. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O 
God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Susanna, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer another sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. 
never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let's pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The parish office will be closed on Monday, July the 3rd, and Tuesday, July the 4th, in observance of the holiday. We will reopen on Wednesday, July the 5th at 9 a.m. There also will be no lectionary Bible study on Monday evening, July the 3rd. Enjoy your holiday and be safe. Uh, I don't recommend that you play with fireworks, but if you do, just be very careful. Last night it sounded like we were being shelled at the rectory. So if you could just aim them in some other direction, that would be wonderful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>